So can you tell me your name and what you do for Aptera? Uh, my name is Hennis. I am the one who helped build the Gamma vehicle. I am the vehicle team. So we're the ones who transport the vehicle to test sites, to the showroom floor here. Um, we're the ones who maintain and keep the vehicles up. We're the ones who build them, debug them, make sure their vehicles are on the road, make sure they're here. So this car was really fun to build. Um, it has all of our most updated features on it, which is really nice. Yeah. It has the really nice interiors, the seats. Um, this car is really nice for showing what production is actually probably going to look like. Yeah, I could. I can just. Be, I sat in the Alpha Luna two days ago, or on Thursday. Yeah. And sitting in this yesterday, it just feels so solid. It feels really nice inside. I sat in and have plenty of headroom. It's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Good job building it. No, it's 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 fun. It's really nice. There's a lot of updated features. What are you most proud of with this car? It's here. <laughs> it's here, that's and huge. it's 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 we're able to actually have people sit in it. Um, I think that's the biggest thing. If, if you can actually show people, you can sit in it. You can see what it looks like. You can see like how everything the screen sits, how the screen sits here. Yeah. Um, for me as a car person, you know, when you go to car shows, you don't really get to sit or sit in anything. Not all the time. Not no. all the time, but if you're able to sit in a prototype vehicle and actually be like, oh, this is cool, I can know where everything is, that's a huge stepping stone. Yeah. Yeah, I appreciate you've let people sit in it. I could, the line yesterday was just massive all day. Like, even up until like 435, there were still people. <laughs> yeah, so line. I wasn't here for that. Um, but no, I mean, it, we're going to have another thing today where people can sit in it. Cool. Um, but it'll be really good. Good. Will there be any like top-down 3D view like for helping with parking? I don't know yet, and I really can't say anything on that yet. Okay. But I will know that I can't. What I can tell you right now is that the backup camera system and the overall visual of the car won't be really hard. Okay. It'll be it'll be pretty nice to see. So the camera is so, down by the tail. Yeah. So you have two cameras. You'll have a regular camera for your review camera. Um, and then you'll have what is called a fisheye. So when you're parking, your main screen will transition to a fisheye so that you can see like the broad range around you. you know, oh, like a wide angle, like yeah. a 360 sort of, but just the front. Yeah, okay. it'll be more of like a 200 kind of wide, like a 180 to 200, like wide vision range. Okay. Like when you back up in a car there nowadays, like anything 2017 and newer, they have that camera system in the back. So when you back up, you know, you get like a good visual area. Gotcha. Um, so the camera, there's no, camera up high it's just down there yeah so we're so where they're touching the tail right now the camera is going to be down there in the center yeah and you can actually see it if you go over there it'll be like a black little oval yeah and there'll be two cameras that. there that's that's our backup camera oh there's two separate ones that it toggles between so wide angle and narrow yes okay so the narrow is just more like so like the, if you're driving if that's your review yeah so so if you were to look in your review mirror it'd be the same exact image if you were to look in your review mirror with the camera Okay. So you know how like when you look in your view mirror, you get that zoomed in kind of feature? It'll be the same thing for the rear. And it just toggles if you're actually in reverse? Um, yes. Okay. But the reverse main screen's going to probably primarily in the center screen. So when you reverse, it's probably going to show up there instead of the reverse in your rear view. So it's just all straight there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Is there going to be like charging like 12 volt or like USB? charging yeah. like for phones in there yeah we'll have we'll have bluetooth we'll have usb charging um i don't know what the outlets will be but i know there will be usb charging okay i think that's gonna have to be a standard for most uh everything nowadays yeah yeah i mean i think the 12 volt outlet socket's probably gonna die here pretty soon without yeah i the more you think about it, the 12 volt sockets like it's just there to have a usb to plug in in the end everything's yeah. going to usb yeah Is the is the skin cooling active on this gamma? I can't release that information. Okay. But it's really cool. It's cool. <laughs> I think Chris told me yesterday the the sensors on the front are like ultrasonic on the wheels. Is that that can help for parking? Yes. Kind of beeps at you, kind so of USS thing. sensors are standard in all cars now. Okay. And so it'll help you with parking. It'll help you with judging. The corners of the cars let's say if you're on the driver's seat and you can't tell where the curb is that us sensor will give you the idea in the, in the broad range of where it is on the back it's there as well on the back placement there will be i don't know the exact spots but there will be us sensors on the back side okay. without a doubt gotcha 
Will the will the tires be run flats or are they just like regular? I don't know. I can't release that information. Okay. Um, I I hope that they do. Just for the, just for the fact that how you have the wheel pants on there and you have the skirt. You know, we try to have something really robust in there. Yeah. One question I had on one of my comments is there. I don't know if this is far out in the future, but is there a way to like, if you're going to be out on a long trip, like a month long trip or something, is there a preferred way to store it? Like obviously not in the sun because it would just be kind of wasting energy. So what most EV vehicles have nowadays, um, there'll be a function where the BMS will have an algorithm that will detect if you're not driving it, it'll go like what's in like a safe storage where you won't be consuming a lot of voltage. Okay. So you won't probably need to put in a storage mode. It also depends on what the battery percentage that you have it at. If you don't charge it, just like most vehicles, if you don't charge it before you go on your trip, you're probably going to kill it yeah. just because of how low it is. If you fully charge it before you leave your trip, you'll be more than just fine. Okay. But so more than really. likely as, as engineering progresses through the years, and especially with our car, I doubt we'll probably have an issue with that. Just not make sure it's super low. Just, okay. just make sure it's super low. Yeah. yeah. Not super low. Okay. Is there going to be... I guess a couple questions like, will it be like a sun visor? So like when it's parked, you can keep the interior cooler. Oh, sorry, say that again. Like if the car is parked and you don't want to keep, you don't want to heat up the cabin, it'll be, will it be like a sun visor, like a solar sun visor? Like if it's just stationary, you don't want the cabin to heat up. Well, there probably won't be a solar sun visor, especially if you have solar panels on the dash. On the dash okay. But the windows are robust enough to where they won't really produce a lot of heat on the inside. You know how you have windshields. So it's got like a tint or a UV coating. Yeah, like a UV coating on there okay. to make sure that it's safe. Gotcha. Cool. Will there be like a kind of like a like a, sh a screen or something you could kind of hide the stuff you're storing in the back from people? I don't know yet that yet. I don't think they, I don't know. Okay. Has there been any progress on the off-road kit? Uh, no progress yet, but our beta vehicle that we had, if you've ever seen it, it's a little rad rod looking thing. Yeah. I mean, we've, we tried breaking the thing in half and it still runs. Like we ran over dirt road, we ran over our testing, the testing facility we went to, we went on like big potholes, uh, rattle road, brick road, you know, we, we, like I said, we tried to break it. And the best thing that we could have done to break it is that we blew the tires. We put another fresh set of tires on there. And it kept going. Broke those tires and it still kept going. Wow. <laughs> we thought we're like, oh man, did we break a control arm? Did, did the hub and the wheel bearing or the motor break? No. Just the tire. It just, it, we literally slapped new tires on it powered it back on and it kept going wow. it kept testing is it possible to like remove all the wheel coverings so you can just kind of go off road just kind of all the tires exposed uh probably not recommended um but there might be a version where you can probably take something off or probably replace it with i feel in my own personal opinion i feel like you could probably take off the wheel pants um and kind of get you that little extra clearance yeah uh, same thing with the rear skirt i know the rear skirt will probably will be either chopped in half or maybe something of where you can remove it and kind of store it inside the vehicle or off to the side yeah that would be like the clearance wouldn't be an issue at all if you just had the raw tires i mean look at the clearance issue i mean look at the clearance it has now yeah. when you look at a, another ev car it's pretty low but you look at here we have such a high ground clearance it's not it's not even really that i mean like you can take off, yeah. yeah you can literally take off the, the wheel pants right now and, and go on a fire yeah, so road what's the height distance like in the belly like the low point uh, i can't release that okay but i know it's high enough to where if you ever go on a fire road you're probably oh, yeah, not going to so run into an issue yeah <laughs> Where are the speakers in the car? Uh, speakers are going to be in the dash, and they're probably going to be maybe some in the door panels. Okay. So what's the difference with the enhanced solar option add-on? So it's just how many solar panels you have. So our basic solar panels, you're going to oh, have... sorry, the advanced sound. Oh, I don't know. Okay. I wouldn't know about that. I know about the solar panels, but I know about the sound. Okay. Sound will, will be more of a later in production kind of a thing. Right now, we're getting solar and EV functions down, like wired down to almost near perfection, so that you know, it sounds really not that big of a thing. It's what we're trying to show people is you can eliminate range anxiety 
go a good range, charge in the sun, get back in it, and come back home. Yeah. You know, that's that's the biggest thing. I love that. I love it too. And I came from EV field, and this is amazing. Is there? How was? How will you secure the Bluetooth connection to the car, or will it be secure? I should say. I mean, it'd be. From what I'm understanding, it would be the same as if you were to secure your phone to a speaker. It'd be pretty secure. I mean, you're gonna have like a pin or something. Yeah, like you're gonna have a pin between the two, you know, so that nobody can like hear it on your conversation or something like that. There'll be yeah. more than likely a pin between your phone and, and the vehicle. Does the composite shell still hemp fiber, carbon, and like a resin, or is that changed? It's like, probably gonna change a little bit. Um, as we test more and probably when we get near towards like crash testing and stuff, that might change a little bit. Okay. But I know that right now the structure is pretty sound. Like our beta test vehicle is, I wouldn't say dumbed down, but it's pretty, it's pretty solid. Uh -huh. Like I said, we tried to break it and it didn't break. And it's What's a fiber. What's that one made out of? Fiber fiber glass. Fiber it's fiberglass. Fiberglass reinforcement. Okay. And like I said, we, we tried breaking the thing in half and it still just kept going. How thick is the composite on the beta? Not super thick, but it's it's pretty durable. Okay. Like if you were to compare it to like a car, that would be pretty strong. Yeah. I mean, it's not thin as sheet metal is. If you think about fiberglass composite, it has to be like a little bit thick, just yeah. so you can have some rigidity. So it's a little more insulative, right? As far as like the cabin goes. Yeah, I mean, and technically that's the thing too, is that when you're running uh, fiberglass, excuse me, you're gonna have a pretty good insulation. You're gonna have reduces of noise. You're gonna have reduction of wind noise too. Yeah. So that's a good thing is that you know you're not going to be hearing a whole bunch of wind noise. You're, you're probably hear it. You hear some, but just reduce. Yeah, that's great. I think those are my main thing is that this is that first time seeing the car in person, the Gamma. And I'm just really blown away by it, and it's oh, so am I. It's I, an amazing car. I mean, we we tested the solar function on it, and it was it worked. It worked really well. We tested the solar roof and the and the solar dash, and it, we sit in the sun, and it worked, and it worked amazingly. So is the, the, is the solar panels different on the dash? Is this all the same? All the same stuff. All the same stuff. Okay, so it's just a different cover. Yes. Okay. So the, obviously the roof's going to be a little bit more thicker than the dash. Yeah, because yeah. Because it's going to be out there, and we've been testing the solar panels through like hail testing. We've been. I got this big fat air cannon that we're just shooting yeah, just I saw large a stuff. Short video of that. Oh, it's funny. it's funny. Uh, the first time I didn't know about it, I went to the other warehouse and I was dropping off some supply, and I hear like these loud banging in the back, and I thought something fell down. And a couple of guys come around the corner, like I'm like, "What the hell was that?" And they're all like, "Oh no, we're uh, we're throwing hail at it." Was like, it actual hail. ice? Or yeah, ice? no, literally like like from golf ball to like full softball size. Wow. And they're just smashing the crud out of it, and it stays. It's amazing how well that stays together. I thought it would have broke. Honestly, in my opinion, for seeing hail hit a car, I thought it would have dented. No. Just brush it off. It just, really. it, it flexed right back. Wow. And the solar cells still worked. That's great. It's amazing. Yeah, I mean, I love this car. Coming from previous uh, people, it's pretty cool. Yeah. I think this car will solve a lot of range anxiety, a lot of affordable transportation. For a car that's starting at 2500 that has 250 miles of range that has basic solar has safety functions of a car and it's cheaper you can't get that right now no you can't i think and it's ev it's full electric yeah like you see evs like the other evs that are in production you see them and oh there's another one like they're not as special anymore like they're still they lost to, their hype yeah they yeah. lost their hype a little bit if you, like I happened to drive, see an Alpha Luna just on the way to the factory. Yeah. That was the first time I saw it in person, like a total head jerk. <laughs> what is that? That's yeah. the Luna. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that would be everybody's reaction, whether they, you know, they cannot help but not look at it. It'll it's a, draw it's a cool car. There's a lot of people that kind of want to bash on it. They're like, oh, people want to buy it because of the design. I'm like, you can buy it for the design or you can buy it for its primary use. It's an EV car that charges itself, which no one does. No, no. one comes near that. No. And it's affordable. That's the thing. It's an affordable car. I mean, SEG and E loves the idea because you're taking it off the grid. You're literally taking the car off the grid. If you charge it in the day, 
you know, and you wait till like nine or seven o'clock at night until they tell you, hey, you know, you can plug everything back in. Yeah. And it works perfectly. Well, I just love the fact that you don't have to invest in a level two charger like in the garage. You can just use your outlet. That's, you can use a standard outlet. That would be a huge selling point for so many people because those, I don't know, I haven't priced those. What's an extra cost? It's like, I don't want to pay for that if I don't have to. No, no, no. I mean, even if you have a standard dryer plug, you can literally unplug your dryer and plug in the level two charging. That's true, yeah. But I mean, but I do get what you're coming from. A lot of people want to have like a full like outlet station for it to handle the load. But I mean, honestly, for how efficient this is, how well it drives, how the fact that it charges itself, to compare to charging a regular vehicle, charging a regular vehicle, you're really not going to need to. Yeah. I mean, it's going to mostly charge itself. Like a level two, you could usually charge like the six hundred or a thousand, possibly overnight, right? Without a doubt. I mean, a level one, you'll still get same input. I mean, again, the the battery is not crazy big, but it's still really efficient for what it's at. I mean, our starting's at two hundred fifty miles of range, yeah. so it works really well. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time. That was really no, I appreciate fun. it. Thank, thank you. you.